if we think about um, Excel and Achimatic, I think that's the best way to um, to get into into the Achimatic you know version of, of pivot tables. Um, you know how people consider that uh, pivot tables is one of the key tools in Excel, right? You know they're widely used. You know financial people, distribution people, you know uh, supply chain people. Who doesn't use you know pivot tables, right? So in Excel, if you were in Excel, normally what you do is uh, step one, you prepare a worksheet, right, with the source. Let's call it the raw data that you want to analyze, right? You got to have your table ready, right? Your columns, you can have, you know, the right names, right? And you got to know that the data that you <coughs> want to um, study, <coughs> sorry, it's correct. Yeah? It is it is valid data, right? And for example, you could have tables, you know, for sales, shipments, um, or any kind of financial information, right? Once you know that you have a worksheet with the right source data, that's when you go ahead and design your pivot table based on the source data. And you know, in Excel, it's all about ranges, right? So that's how you go about it. In Excel, you identify your ranges, which are your columns, which are your rows, which are your values. And then once you give that information to the pivot table, designer in Excel, then you use the pivot tables, your data visualization tools, and, turn, and you turn your raw data into useful business information. And the uh, flexibility of the pivot table is that you can just drag and drop fields and change position, you know, change order, uh, change grouping, um, and change the, uh, the, um, uh, the sum functions, the average functions, whatever you're using to study your data once you're already in the pivot table. Once the, if the, if the raw data, uh, the source data changes, you know, you have to refresh, right? Well, that's how you work in Excel. Well, in Acumatica, you do follow the same pattern, right? The difference, which is a good difference, is that your source data, it's a generic inquiry. Okay, the, the generic inquiry is the, the ones that you already know, the, those are the source of your um, um, pivot table. Any generic inquiry that is saved in your sitemap can be used as a raw data source, which is great because a lot of your customers have already have um, quite a few generic inquiries, right? They use them for different things. They're, they're ex you, they export them to Excel, and that's how they're probably doing, right? They're exporting the generic inquiry from Acumatica, put it into Excel, and then use Excel pivot tables. Well, you don't have to do that anymore, right? So your, your first step is to use an existing or create a new generic inquiry, put it in the sitemap, right? And then design a pivot table that will be based on your generic inquiry. Then the other advantage is that you can share that pivot table to all the users, the authorized users, right? And then they can use the same data visualization tools to play with the pivot table export the pivot table data, and then even do more in Excel if that's what they want, okay? So uh, we're thinking about, you know, what, what, what is unique, right, about um, using pivot tables in Acumatica, because they're native now, right? Well, one is that you have access to 100% of your data, potentially, right? Because anything that you can put in a generic inquiry using your data access classes, then it's available uh, to be analyzed with a pivot table, right? The other big thing is that that's something that you do, I don't think you can even do that in Excel in an easy way anyway, is that the values in your pivot table, they can provide drill down capability to the detailed documents that are the source of the data. You can organize things so that you can go you know, down to the sales order level if that's what you want, right? If you're talking about sales, right? So um, that's very important because you can navigate, you can drill down from the pivot table uh, in order to answer detailed questions about the data that you see. Uh, and then number three is that since you're managing um, pivot tables in, in a site map, site map, so you know that you can control access rights to the pivot table that you share, right? The pivot table that you create, it's initially, it, it's only visible to you, the user. You actually, you'll show you, you need to go through an actual step of sharing, right? Making it, put it in the site map and then you, you can control the access to the sitemap via your normal security roles. So um, let's create one pivot table, okay, and let's see how it goes. 
what I'm, what I'm going to do here, I'll show you the screens real quick, right? And, um, and then we're actually going to do it together, right? So uh, what I did here is find an existing um, uh, one that I'm familiar with, uh, an existing GI, uh, the sales profitability analysis that it's standard in Acumatic out of the box in your accounts receivable um, explore section, right? So um, you, in this case, like I said, I, I'm using an existing GI, but you can create your own, obviously, right? So once you identify your GI, so from the customization menu, assuming you have rights to do that, then you have pivot table, okay? And then that's how you will start, by finding the GI, and then customization, select pivot table, okay? That will take you to the pivot table designer, which actually, this is where it lives, right? It's in their system, customization, pivot tables, okay? If you wanted to start from here, instead of starting from here, that's perfectly fine, right? You can just go here, pivot table, and find it here in your in your list of um, pivot tables, find what you, um, the, the, the pivot table you want to work with, okay? Now, what you see here is that the first information that the pivot table uh, uses is, is the screen ID. It's kind of hidden there, but it's the screen ID. That is the name of the GI that you are using, right? Then the pivot table ID, you see, you can have multiple pivot tables per GI. So what you do is that you actually type the pivot tables here, and then once you save it, it comes here. All the pivot tables that have been created for this GI will be available in this menu, okay? The sections that are in the pivot table are very familiar to you if you have used pivot tables in Excel. First, in this section, you have all the fields that came where came from the uh, uh, from the GI. Those will be equivalents to your columns in Excel, okay? First thing that you would identify actually would be go from fields, that's how I normally do it, right, to rows, right? Those will become the rows of your pivot table, okay? Then the columns, what you want to use in, in the column section, then the values, okay? And here's, for example, where I would put, if let's say they were you were doing sales, right? So net sales, for example, okay, would be a typical value they would put here, right? And then each, each time that you have a field here, you'll see that the properties show up, and this is where you would define, okay, I want to do an average, I want to do a sum. And then finally, the filters. And filters, um, they're better understood once you see them in action. But basically, that's, that's what it is, okay? Find the GI or design your own GI, create a new pivot table, select the, the rows, select columns, and select values, and configure everything here. And then you can view the pivot table, okay? So, see, in this case, I created a pivot table. I put in my rows. I put the salesperson, okay? In my columns, I put month, right? And in my values, I put net sales, right? Okay, so net sale, you see how it's, it's going to do a, an aggregate function, sum, right? And I can format here. I can, you see, you can enter, like, uh, C for currency, okay? And then you're going to have uh, the pivot table the way you want, right? And this is how this pivot table will look, right? So you see the rows that you selected are here. That's your salesperson. Actually, I selected only one row, right? The columns would be the month. All that data was already available, okay? And then the value would be the sum of the net sales, okay? Something uh, that I already mentioned is that you see how those are hyperlinks. From here, you can drill autom automatic. You know, you, there's no additional um, instructions to give to the program. You can drill down into the values that come, make up that number. Something that's very useful is that you can sort on results, meaning um, when I started this, uh, the, the default sorting would have been salesperson because those were my rows, right? But then I can sort for by any of these columns. So I can, for example, quickly identify who are my top sellers, right? If these were items, right, I could have quantities, for example, right, and then or or, or, or dollar amounts, you know, if these were stock items, and I could sort and immediately see. I don't have to do any anything additional. Okay, it's uh, uh, readily available for you to sort, and this is great, right? Then um, you can have the other. Remember the filters I told you uh, in the other in the previous screen that you can add filters to the section. When you add filters there. 
they're all available here. They're going to show up here in this top section. And what you do with that is that you can drag and drop and start playing with your data. Okay. In this case, um, you see how I drill down here and it gave me this information, right? You see how I have more, more tabs here? Those are other um, pivot tables that were saved for the same GI. They will all show up here. Okay. I have an example here, and like I said, we're going to do this, uh, um, you know, on live. Um, we are, um, we have uh, more filters, okay. And in this case, I took, I dragged and dropped customer here. Uh, you know, I dragged it right there, and then immediately became a subgroup of the salesperson. So I could immediately see without doing any additional programming. Uh, I can immediately see salesperson and then see who the customers are, right? And then I could sort by here, right? And then again, you know, see, um, uh, have a, a very good uh, BI um, process in front of me without any programming, okay? All right. So, uh, after this quick overview, let's, um, um, let's create one. Box um, analysis, sales analysis. That's here in Acumatica, right? So you come here, pivot table, and immediately this takes me that. If I want to up create a new pivot table, I'll click plus. Plus is a new pivot table for this GI. Okay? So I'm going to give it a name. Okay? New cells. I'm going to save it. This name will would be moved here, right? So you see how I have all this, right? Okay, so now I got all my fields. Something that I need to uh, check, we, we may want to check with Acumatica. Um, this is their uh, their original, um, let me go back to here. I want to show you a couple of things that I have noticed that are probably not working 100% right. I have this columns here you see how they're all unique i don't have any duplicate names here let's take we want to start with customer let's say and put customer in my rows right and then uh, let's say that i want to go by um date on my column actually i got month already here okay and then uh, net sales and put it here so now I'm going to click on each one and see the availability of, uh, of properties. Month, I don't have to change anything. And then net sale, uh, let's do a C for currency. And you can change the width, right? You can decide whether to show or not show totals, right? I always start just like that and then start playing with that. Uh, and let's say that I want to put... Um, um, an item class here on my filter, just to add available. So, uh, view pivot. And here's my first pivot in all of its glory. Let's see that. I got customer. I almost like you a trick. You really need to be really good with your hands with this one. <laughs> okay. And here I have month. Okay. And total. Okay, and like I said, I can quickly sort the selling order. Okay, there you go. These are my top customers, right? Okay. So if I want to throw item class, okay, I can see, for example, I want to put it here as my first level. There, okay. So see how quickly it responds by adding a new, uh, uh, using my, my filter that I have here. Now it says inactive filter, I have nothing else here. Then um, I just, I can quickly see by adding class who are my first. My, and you see this sort works by group. So it's a smart sort, right? So you see how um, it's sorting here. So Sacramento will be my top buyer, my top um, customer for this item class, right? Then it starts again, right? with um, let's say you move to food, right? So then if this is my, my top customer for food and so forth, right? And then you have, um, 
the drill down capabilities. Okay, I want to see um, this number here. I'm clicking. Okay, so it took me to the sales profitability analysis, which was the source of my data, right? It took the um, uh, a filter, right? Apply, okay, and it showed me exactly the uh, orders that are making that up. So I can drill down to the order level, and I can have full visibility on my data. Okay, so now I can stay here, and then let me show you here. Okay. If I make changes here, right, to my new sales analysis, right, I can click save, and this will save this exactly as you see it. If I wanted to create a new pivot table right from here without having to go back, I can do save as, right? So save as will be, you know, new sales version one, right? Save, and this is going to show here, right? Okay, so I can go take this out of here, leave it as is, right? And I can have this version here, okay, which has this type of grouping, right? So I can pretty much work with uh, all the combinations that I want. Um, if I don't save it, obviously next time that I run, it's going to go back to the original format. But if I want to, I can save it, right? And do save as, and I have a new version. All of these are the different combination of pivot tables that are uh, working uh, on top of that GI, okay? So uh, I'm going to go back to this one. Um, I also have the option right from here to go to my edit in inquiry here if I wanted to work with that. In case something is not right, I need an additional field, right? Okay, I can. So it's very, uh, you know, friendly to, to you as developer because you got access to all the different components, you know, right here from the different menus, right? Okay.